Uh, Lee Evans, I'm the head groundsman here at the Principality Stadium. What do I do all day? I'm preparing the pitch usually for international fixtures. Outside of that, I'm repairing it from, from an international fixture, really. So we look after the grass. They call them hybrid pitches. They're, they're reinforced pitches. We stitch plastic strands into the, into the pitch system. The grass then fills in the gaps. As the roots go down, they anchor themselves on the, on the plastic twines here, which prevent the pitch from cutting up. I always say to people, if you broke in the stadium with a spade, you couldn't dig a hole in that pitch. Those strands make it physically impossible. This is our irrigation and undersoil heating room. Here we have the controls for our undersoil heating, which allows me to keep a constant temperature, approximately between 10 and 12 degrees, where the grass can keep growing and keep active. Over here we have our irrigation system, which, as I showed you earlier, pumps all the water out to the pitch. And we also have a lot of spare bulbs and armatures for my lighting rigs. We're um, a very dark stadium. In fact, we are the darkest stadium in Europe to grow grass. That, that's been um, measured. So what we have to do then is give the grass supplementary light. Um, we have a, a bank of artificial lighting rigs that cover half the pitch, which are running 20 hours a day. So we give the, the grass a four hour window to, to trick it into thinking it's night time. Um, and they run seven days a week, right up until the day before a game. Basically, you cannot grow grass in a stadium without supplementary lighting. We have a state-of-the-art irrigation system that I can pinpoint dry areas of the pitch and specifically water them. I can water the whole pitch. I can water using my phone. But generally, we do it all from computer here. It's a fantastic system. Pick out the sprinklers, set a program, and off it goes. My name is Philippa Hawkins and I work for a company called Falconry Services and we specialise in flying birds of prey for bird control. So we're brought into the stadium every day to fly the hawk around, try and keep the pigeons out. When they built the stadium many years ago, they were having a problem with pigeons coming in. This big famous roof, they like to get underneath it. Obviously they roost up there. What comes out the pigeon overnight drops on the seat. Not very nice if you're sitting there watching your rugby. So we come in, we fly the bird around. Uh, the pigeons see the Harris hawk. They're naturally programmed to be scared of it, so they fly away somewhere safer. Our birds flying around getting exercise and we get to play with our birds all day. They're native to South America, but they're in the wild in America. They work as a family group. So the older birds would be uh, up in the air with the experience. The young birds would be on the ground. They'd flush the prey and they'd work as a team, a bit like wolves to hunt their food. Obviously, we use this gregarious, this social nature in captivity to work them in the stadium because that social nature, they're quite happy to work with people, they're quite happy to see everything that's going on in the stadium, it doesn't seem to bother them. And obviously, we can do our bird control. Well, I'm, um, I'm Jerry Toms and I'm the, one of the stadium safety officers. Our task is to manage the, uh, the crowd, the 74,500 people in, get them all in, get them searched, and sit them down, let them enjoy a game and then hopefully let them all go home with a happy result. All the decisions that are made that affect the game, uh, whether it be anything to do with the infrastructure of the stadium, whether it be a water failure or a power failure, everything is managed from this room. The movement of people in and out of the stadium is all managed from this room. If there are incidents that have to be dealt with, if there are medical incidents to be dealt with, it all comes through this room. It's a big beast actually, it's a big machine that sort of sparks itself off at about six o'clock in the morning and then runs through probably to about midnight. Uh, This year, uh, this big piece of machinery is the roof uh, opening uh, equipment with the, uh, the roof opening button there. Uh, it takes about 25 minutes to open the roof and another 25 to close it. There's only two or three people in the stadium allowed to press that button. Uh, I'm not one of them. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the, the facilities area where everything's controlled from lights through to the heating, the ventilation uh, and everything to do with mechanical and engineering of the stadium on a match day. Uh, down here you've got the radio operators who speak to the stewards and they report directly then into the safety officer. Down here you've got South Wales Police, quite a big chunk, uh, radio operators, tactical advisors and then a police silver commander, usually a chief inspector or a superintendent sitting here. Over in the corner you've got the South Wales ambulance guys who will sit here and control the ambulance routes in and out of the stadium when the road closures are on. 
uh, and right next to them uh, the Cardiff Council members who run the sort of highways, the road closures, uh, they've got their own sort of CCTV system looking around the city uh, and right next to those guys are our CCTV operators, you know, hundreds of cameras, digital CCTV cameras around the stadium, lots to look at. If they pick up anything on their cameras, they report it back to the safety officer, he can then flick that camera onto his screen and direct stewards in accordingly to deal with whatever incident it might be. Safety and security are right up there with everything uh, we, we've got to do. Uh, it's, it's a huge deal and the focus of this control room is the safety and security of everyone who comes into the stadium. My name's Peter Owens, I'm the Rugby Heritage Manager of the Welsh Rugby Union. I try to collect, preserve and provide artefacts um, from Welsh rugby history that will be safe for future generations and hopefully at some stage properly displayed within the stadium complex. Well, we, we've got a range of gifts that have come to the Union over the years. Sancho Panza and Don Quixote from the Spanish Union carved in wood. We have from the Danish Union gonks, little furry animals. And we've got a, a telephone in a ball, and that telephone is very redolent of the 1980s. Strangely, from the French Federation over the last couple of years, um, we've had a range of very colourful ceramic cockerels. All, all interesting things to see. We are in the International Players' Lounge at the Principality Stadium. Um, we have within this room jerseys and balls and artefacts relating to former players and former matches. We have jerseys um, for what were at that time big forwards that now look as if they would fit a 14-year-old and uh, the, the, the physiology of players has changed so dramatically in the last 30 or 40 years where they are now much bigger and, and stronger and fitter and faster than they had been previously. We're working towards some form of visitor attraction at the stadium um, where we tell the story of rugby in Wales through modern means but use the artefacts that we have in store. The, these artefacts will actually give some life to the story that is, is being shown. History is important, you learn from history. Um, the deeds of great players are there for us all to, to build upon rather than to dismiss and I think it's very important that we, we keep a sense of history in everything that we do.